Greetings and welcome this time, Dr. Bruce Corey, uh, an economist at Concordia University. Uh, today, I want to share with you uh, some different theories about the economy and the implications for policy. You see, we are confronted with a lot of economic challenges as to what do we do about unemployment? Or what do we do about trade? Or what do we do about business development? And in all of these policies, there are some core economic theories. And I want to introduce you in a very broad way to some of these economic theories. So let's get moving and begin talking about these different theories. So there are the three big questions in the world of economics. And these three big questions are, what do we produce? Do we produce cars? What kind of cars? Do we produce luxury cars or ordinary cars or electrical vehicles? Or what do we do? How do we produce it? Do we produce it with using people or machines or what combination of both and what's the role? How do we produce these uh, commodities or goods and services in the economy? And finally, for who do we produce it? High income people, low income people, how do we decide about that? And so, the way we answer these three critical questions will help shape the way the economy functions uh, in our world today. So uh, let's think about uh, these three big theoretical frameworks. One framework is basically the market framework in which this theory builds around the functioning of markets, the demand and supply forces that interact to answer these three questions in the economy. The other group of theories are what we might call structural theories. Structural because they look to see these differences or groups and power structures within society and how they answer these questions to produce, how to produce and for whom to produce. For example, integrating the role of race, gender, unions, class, geography, and so on. And then there's these pragmatic theories and they basically uh, are an open book where they look at uh, the reality of the situation and see when it's the market um, analysis and when it's a structural analysis or when it's a combination of both. So let's dig in a little bit deeper into each one of these theories. So let's start first with these market theories. So basically, these are theories around the free market. So as you can see in this picture, there's an exchange that's going on. Someone is buying vegetables and getting paid for it. And so there is this process of demand and supply. Consumers who are demanding something and a business person who is supplying it. And at the right price, both of them are going to be happy. And all that the government needs to do is to make sure that this transaction works seamlessly and with a minimum of barriers. And so the government should provide these critical infrastructures to help these markets flourish. For example, legal systems and court systems and security and a central bank that can monitor and control the money supply and good data and information, protection of property rights and good communication systems. And even here also, private markets can supply this infrastructure that's preferred. And so what would happen at times of crisis in this theory do nothing, it will sort itself out. If there is uh, too much inflation or high prices in the economy, uh, people, businesses will actually cut back. And when they cut back, people are going to lose jobs. And the economy, the excess demand is going to go out of the economy. And 
it's back to equilibrium and the same thing when there's a recession. And all the government needs is to make sure that there's enough money in the economy to get these transactions moving. And if, according to some versions of this theory, if, if you want to do something, do things that work to help businesses produce better, be more productive, uh, and things such as tax, tax cuts is what might help. Uh, also, in terms of trade relations between countries, have free trade, remove barriers, so there's a free trade of goods and services in the country. And having simple, credible policies that everybody expects, so there's no surprises, and this whole machinery of the economy goes on well. So that's basically uh, uh, what these free market kinds of theories uh, would advocate. Then there is a, a market uh, theories that uh, are, focused, are more of what we might call a regulated market theory. That means markets can fail for some reasons, uh, just like your car fails during winter because you had a dead battery. Uh, it's not that the car is bad. All you need to do is just jumpstart the car. And so similarly in the economy, the economy functions but fails for whatever reason. And so you need the role of government to come in and bring this economy back to this stability. And so if there's high recession, meaning people are out of jobs, the government can come in through spending or through cutting of taxes, or if there's high inflation or high prices, uh, the Federal Reserve Bank can take that extra money out by raising interest rates. And so government intervention plays a very important role because markets can fail for whatever reasons. For example, during the pandemic, in uh, where everything shut down. So what do we do? In in this particular theory, you do something. And so there's a whole portfolio of policy tools that you can do. Many of them focus on in demand, like in the pandemic, the stimulus payment that went to households to get them out, to spend money, to be able to pay for goods and services, and watching money supply and actively keeping it to at a level that will make uh, businesses and consumers engage more effectively in the market. They may not necessarily be for free trade, but more of a regulated trade to make sure that uh, the domestic economy is, is safeguarded. Uh, and so it's some kind of regulated trade uh, between countries. Uh, so there's a role for some kind of what we might call protection or trade barriers uh, between countries and to include uh, factors like uh, labor agreements and environmental agreements together with the trade components. Then we have these structural theories that say that basically markets don't exist except on paper. In reality, there are these different interest groups that have power, and depending upon their power, they have they can control segments of the economy or vast um, areas of the economy. And, and these groups, uh, 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 interest groups, uh, can be uh, a big player. On the other hand, there could be inequality in the economy because of factors like racism or sexism, where certain groups are um, do not benefit from the economy, are deliberately kept uh, outside the economic system or in a, in a most extreme form uh, could be slavery. Uh, but um, uh, if there are uh, ideas about gender and roles for different people in the economy and who can do have job or who can be a leader, uh, other kinds of structural factors could be class. That means high income versus low income. Uh, workers versus business owners, or it could even be geographic areas where certain parts of the country is agricultural, another part is mining, or another part is manufacturing, and each one of these areas can operate differently. So we need to understand the different structural forces in this market system, or in any other system, and 
integrate that into our policy. So in crisis, again, they would say we got to do something. We have to act with situational or structural intelligence, see what are these groups and what are their power structures and how are these decisions make, and hopefully come through some kind of a social compact between the different groups so that this economy can grow in a, in a positive way that benefits all. And this group could also call for some kind of regulated trade between countries, not a totally free trade. So the final group of theories are what I would call the pragmatic theories. Then they would say, well, the reality is complex. We can't come up with a simple theoretical framework, but we've got to understand what's going on and what's the solution. And we can learn about the way market forces operate. And sometimes it's a market solution. We can learn from how these different groups are engaging in society and integrate that into our analysis so they are better and they work more effectively. We have to understand the role of institutions such as the banking system or the educational system uh, and how these institutions operate and behave very often with their own power structures. We got to bring in the role of culture and history, uh, historical analysis of the current reality and merge these all together into our analysis and our tools. So it's not so clear cut and clean, but it's going to require uh, a, a, a very intense look at what's going on. So in crisis, you do something by address the root cause of what's going on and act with this situational in, in, in intelligence, bring the structural groups together, uh, come up with some kind of a, like uh, a shared vision for the future and free trade or regulated trade again, uh, local conditions uh, determine what's what what should be in a policy. So those three kind of big buckets of theories in the economy. In the United States, unfortunately, most of our instructions focus on the market theories, whether it's free markets or regulated markets. And there's not much attention given to these structural theories or through these pragmatic ways of looking at the economy. And interestingly enough, in our world of policy, more and more, uh, we uh, we fight these battles, uh, mainly around the market theories uh, with one political party and the others, um, and, and not fully uh, look at uh, like what a pragmatic economist would look at these various forces that work uh, to that might impact the economy. So let's take some examples. I'm going to look at the two big ones, inflation when there's rising prices in the economy and unemployment. So when you look at inflation, the markets theories would say, oh, the reason why prices are going up is uh, there's too much money supply, uh, meaning there's a lot of money in there. And, and, and uh, as one of the famous economists, Milton Friedman, gave this example, the helicopter flies overhead and drops $100 bills. Guess what's going to happen right away? People are going to take that and go and spend it. Immediately, we can't produce cars or computers or whatever. So inflation, why is the inflation too much money supply in the economy? Uh, Keynesian, these regulated market theories would say not just money supply, but there could be demand and supply shocks that can hit the economy. Um, uh, uh, demand uh, example, for example, uh, the war in Ukraine, uh, uh, impact on gas prices and how that's translating into uh, higher prices into the economy. Or what would happen with the pandemic and the, 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 the freezing of global trade and movements of goods and services between countries that could have an inflationary or cause an impact on rising prices. The structural groups would say that inflation is not just money supply, but it could be some group controlling the prices in their area. And because they do that, that in turn puts pressure on other sectors to cause prices to increase. So whether it is uh, workers or business owners uh, or whatever group that has that ability to control uh, the economy and, and prices in their area, 
you could see some uh, impact on inflation. Also, you could have these demand and supply shocks as we talked about. And some of the more uh, structural theories like the Marxist theories would say, uh, this is an inherent problem of capitalism. Uh, the desire for profit puts pressure on uh, prices and demand. And, and, and it's one of the reasons why uh, you have these business ups and downs in the economy. The pragmatic uh, economists, uh, as uh, we found earlier, would, would try to find out, is inflation today the role of, of rising prices or is it something else? Is it the war in Ukraine? In that case, our solution is going to be different. And then looking at where the prices are rising, is it rising for basic needs of commodity uh, of people like milk and or is it with uh, luxury cars um, and try to understand those kinds of, of, of details and then the solution about it and they would point to the role of uh, huge large corporations uh, as playing a role in in the in in how prices are formed, not not only nationally but globally, uh, the role of the unions that might uh, uh, protect the interest of workers, and uh, but once that happens in one sector, it has implications on the others. So, looking at all these different areas, we have to come up with an appropriate solution for inflation, and where again you might need uh, different groups to come to the table to come up with a solution. Uh, when you look at unemployment, that's people without jobs. Uh, some of the market theories would say that that's typical of a business ups and downs of the economy. Uh, we would call it cyclical, uh, cyclical unemployment, where people be out of jobs because the economy has gone into what we want to call a recession. But then that will be opportunity to expand and businesses will take that opportunity and these people will get their jobs up. Um, others would say uh, there's also something called structural unemployment, and that is people are out of jobs because they don't have the skills that are needed for the economy. And so when we, uh, uh, they would need to get skill training uh, to be able to come back into the marketplace. And so um, that's how uh, these group of market theories might look at unemployment. The structural theories would look at power relations and and the role of, say, race and gender and class uh, in keeping people unemployed or preventing people from getting access not only to basic jobs, but looking at the whole uh, portfolio of jobs available and, uh, and how these structural forces come into play uh, to determine who gets the job or what kind of job or um, the avenues for uh, social mobility and economic mobility. Uh, Marxist theories would 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 attribute unemployment to uh, a strategy of of businesses to keep workers at a at a, at, at less power so that uh, they can maximize profit uh, through lower wages. And then the pragmatic uh, school of economists would say again, uh, looking at what is this, what is causing the unemployment? Is it because people, there are barriers to the labor market? In that case, let's fix the barriers. Is it education? Then let's improve educational outcomes. Is it uh, the uh, um, racial or gender uh, barriers? Uh, let's remove them uh, because that's when you're going to get at the source of the problem and to get a, a, a meaningful solution. So those are uh, some of the uh, different economic theories uh, answering the big questions, what to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce. And as I mentioned to you, there are these market-oriented theories, there are the structural theories, and then the pragmatic theory. So which one of them are you? Are you a market-oriented economist? Are you a structural economist? Or you are, are you a pragmatic economist? And remember, this is real, folks. How people decide what would be the solution to our challenges can make a difference 
especially today. So thanks for listening and till next time, um, have a great day.